History at the Supreme Court this week on gay marriage, and now the fight to define marriage moves back to the states and the courts again. Leading the campaigns, our next guest, Brian Brown from the National Organization of Marriage, and Chad Griffin, the president of the Human Rights Campaign, also led the organization that sparked the court challenge to Proposition 8 in California. And Chad, let me begin with you. Congratulations on your victory at the Supreme Court. So what is next for you? Will your organizations try to bring lawsuits challenging the gay marriage bans in more than 30 states and given what we heard from the court this week, do you expect to succeed? Look, there is no question uh, this was a historic week uh, for equality in this country, and American values really did win. Um, with the erasing of Proposition 8, uh, same-sex couples in the state of California uh, started getting married on Friday. Uh, and now that DOMA has been erased from the books, thanks to that historic decision, uh, those couples across the country who are legally married their, their relationships and their families will be recognized as such. Um, at the same time, while we celebrate, we have to acknowledge that there are 37 states in this country uh, that still don't have equality. And our job is to work harder than we've ever fought before uh, to bring equality, full equality, to every single state in this country. And that's exactly so what we'll start doing now. Is that by repealing the bans or challenging them in court? We'll fight this battle on all fronts, George. Uh, we'll fight it at the ballot box where there are opportunities. We'll fight it at the state legislature. And ultimately, uh, this will come back to our federal courts. And do you think you'll win there? Um, I have all expectation that we will. Look, 30 percent of America, uh, thanks to these decisions, now live uh, in states with marriage equality. It's going to be very difficult to deny uh, equal rights uh, to those who live in other states when the next case ultimately receives, the meantime, uh, reaches the court. In the meantime, you've got this decision where everyone who's legally married in a state now will get federal benefits if they continue to live in that state. Kind of a gray area if someone legally married, say, in the state of Massachusetts moves to the state of Alabama, there seems to be particular problems with Social Security and veterans benefits. So what is it going to take to make sure that, as I know you would like it uh, to see, every legally married couple in the United States, same sex, gets the federal benefits? Yeah, absolutely. There is no reason uh, to deny those benefits, those rights and privileges and protections uh, that come with marriage to any family, George, uh, to any family in this country, whether they live in Hope, Arkansas uh, or in New York City. Um, and so we've got to work, and this administration has been doing a lot already to ensure implementation of this decision. The president said, uh, in his view, a marriage is a marriage. Um, and I hope and expect that very soon, uh, legally married couples, regardless of where they reside, uh, will receive all benefits. Now, there are some issues that Congress might have to address, um, and there's currently a piece of legislation called the Respect for Marriage Act that fully um, rescinds uh, the parts that are remaining uh, of the so-called Defense of Marriage Act. And I expect that Congress will move on that uh, and put into place real permanence so that families across this country can have the protections that they deserve under the law. Finally, Brian Brown is coming up, uh, and I want to get your response to something he said to the New York Times uh, on Saturday. He says they're going to move to roll back legal gay marriage wherever it exists, and went on to give this quote to the New York Times. Ultimately, as Lincoln said, we can't have a country half slave and half free. Your response? Uh, George, look, there is no question. This country has always moved historically, whether it was women's rights or the civil rights movement of the 50s and 60s to today. We have always moved to greater inclusion and treating all of our citizens equally under the law so that a young person today living in Fresno, California or Hope, Arkansas, can grow up with those same dreams, hopes and aspirations as anyone else. At the end of the day, you have to ask yourself two questions. Who is harmed by receiving marriage equality coming to this country. I've asked my friends in those marriage states, my straight friends, and I can't find a single couple whose straight marriage has been harmed but when the gay couple down the street uh, got married. The other question you have to ask yourself is who benefits? Who benefits? It's what Justice Kennedy wrote about. Those kids, thousands upon thousands of kids today who are being raised by same-sex parents, all this does is give them the same rights, protections, and privileges as a, straight, as a straight child being raised by straight parents. Um, so we have to move uh, with great speed and great urgency to ensure that families across this country uh, have equal protection under the law. Uh, and we're well on our way. We're not there yet, uh, but we're well on our way. Chad Griffin, thanks very much. Let's bring in Brian Brown Thank you, George. right now. You just heard those questions asked by Chad Griffin. Let's take the first one. Who is harmed by legalizing same-sex marriage? 
Well, we just saw who was harmed. Uh, the rule of law is harmed, and all those millions of voters in the state of California who stood up and said, we know the truth about marriage. We know that marriage is the union of a man and a woman. They are harmed when the courts are used to say they don't have a right to be represented. And that's what the court did. Uh, Chad talks about American values. Is it an American value to deprive those people in California who stood up and voted to protect marriage as the union of a man and a woman from their right to be heard? And and the court did not do what Ted Olson and David Boies and Chad Griffin wanted it to do. Uh, it did not create a right out of thin air to redefine marriage throughout this country. What it did do was rob the proponents of Proposition 8. After they had seen utter lawlessness with Governor Brown and the Attorney General refusing to defend the law, not giving them a defense, uh, the court said, well, the proponents don't have standing. It did not say that there is a constitutional but, right to redefine marriage. And Justice, I would caution you. I, I would caution you that this can be used, uh, th this precedent is horrific for our republic. It could be used in states, say, that we're moving forward with a, a law to make sure that voting rights are respected. If the governor and attorney general don't want to defend that law, you've just gutted the initiative and referendum Justice process. Scalia, this is not an American value. Justice Scalia seemed more concerned by what the decision is going to do to those state laws and constitutions banning same-sex marriage. Here's what he said in his dissent. He said, the majority arms well every challenger to a state law restricting marriage to his traditional definition. He seems almost certain that if these bans are challenged, they're going to go down. Well, I don't think that that, that, that that is inevitable. What Justice Scalia is pointing to is the absolute travesty of Kennedy's decision in the DOMA case, which really is incoherent. He doesn't even uh, lay out what the basis of his legal reasoning is. And what Scalia is saying is that because Kennedy says something that is patently untrue, that your former boss and all of Congress were somehow motivated by animus when they, uh, when, when, uh, uh, President Clinton signed the Defense of Marriage Act and Congress passed it, saying that this that this truth, that marriage is the union of a man and a woman, is somehow motivated by animus and discrimination, leads to discrimination against those of us who know that there's something unique and special about husbands and wives, mothers and fathers coming together in marriage. And, and that's why he's pointing to the future. There's no doubt there will be an attempt to use the decision uh, that strikes down only Section 3 of DOMA. Section 2 still stands. Uh, states have the right to, to define marriage uh, as they see fit. Bit, but that that will be used in the future. So quickly, where's your next victory? Well, I think uh, there's a hard fight in Illinois going on where we've seen the African-American uh, legislators and pastors, Democrats, standing up and saying, we don't want marriage redefined. In Indiana, there will be a second vote on a state constitutional amendment to protect marriage. And there will be a lot of, of attempts to try and use this decision to redefine marriage in other states. And we will stand for the truth uh, wherever it is. And again, in California, Although uh, the, the Ninth Circuit has, again, lawlessly not waited the 25 days to allow the proponents uh, to, to have a hearing, uh, there now was an emergency okay. uh, uh, application to the Supreme Court to, again, respect the rule of law. And that is not what is happening right yeah. now.